historical film, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. Jorgen Lass investigates the perfect human like a scientist. He asks, where does, what does this guy look like? Well, he has to be beautiful. He has to be young. He has to be bougie. Where is he? He's in a room. It's boundless and radiant with life. How does he function? He gets ready. He sleeps. He falls. He makes love. He eats dinner. And while he eats this dinner, Lass asks, or the narrator asks, what, us what he's thinking. So in the middle of the dinner, the woman he's with mysteriously disappears. And he asks why she's left him. This is a, this is a film, this is a clip from the film. Um, and you can see, yes, why is fortune so capricious? Why is joy so quickly done? I realize, of course, the perfect human has to be beautiful and well-dressed and love to dance. But he also has to have this existential questioning of loneliness, this fear of being alone. We, we need other people to affirm our own existence. This is an integral part of being human. So my new, my new goal with the film was not to update what is the perfect human or what is the perfect human of today. So according to Sherry Turkle, it used to be, I have a feeling I want to make a call. And now it's, I want to have a feeling I need to send a text. She suggests that we used to reach out and ask for assistance, for company, for companionship. But now we can't even develop feelings without someone else being around to share, share them with. The perfect human concludes his questioning with a comment on confusion. Today, too, I experienced something I hope to understand in a few days. In the midst of the unknown, the perfect human has hope. This hope for clarity or revelation or understanding, this too is at the core of the human experience. So I started my piece by updating the vintage perfect human's final words in the spirit of Turkle. Today too, I want to experience something. Who will share it with me? So my first project is a fake Facebook. I wanted, to, I wanted to make a project that calls attention to the time we spend connecting with others online. And I started by creating a fake Facebook character, Danielle. And the, the Danielle actually means God is my judge. So in French, I didn't know that, but I thought that was really suiting. Um, all of her actions online on Facebook needed to show her desperation to connect. She literally needs the affirmation of, or interactions with others to exist, yet highlight her disconnect from reality. To steal Turkle's words, I sure that's where I am. So, I used Daniel to exaggerate a life lived purely to share. I started posting, and I posted about this cute puppy and this homeless man, and she acknowledges that she doesn't have any change, but she takes a picture and posts anyway. If she shares, she's done her part. However, this, this piece really didn't work out very well. Yeah. Um, in order for it to be a success, I needed an audience. And who didn't know my identity. They couldn't be just drawn in the scene. So, <laughs> so I, I moved on, and I decided in order to make this piece really successful, um, I needed to update the, the scientist of the movie. So scientists in the 60s, they, they ask questions, they collect and analyze data. But scientists of today don't need to ask, ask the same questions. They don't need to do the same collecting, because our smartphones could do a lot of that for us. So my new goal, with the help of the smartphone, was to turn the perfect human into a dynamic set of data. The perfect human application to share and compare makes perfection attainable. Endless emails, perpetual photo streams, nonstop news, constant communication. We are always connected, so we are always held accountable. We need tools to help us navigate this information landscape and to better understand our behaviors, habits, and interactions. How else will we know how perfect we are and how perfect we can become? So now we can quantify our perfection. The perfect human application tracks smartphone user data to generate real-time glanceable statistical analysis of a user's functioning based on quantity, not quality, and that quantity comes from the six categories of perfect functioning. The first one is popularity. Please like <laughs> me. 
We used to develop friendships in the high school cafeteria, waiting in line at the coffee shop and frequenting our local bar for after work drinks. Today, we hang out online. The contemporary perfect human uses social media applications to develop meaningful and intimate relationships with people next door or across the world. Next, we have communication skills. Texting is the new hugging. We used to have conversations <laughs> Today we text. It is the only perfect way to show you care. Written skills. Emailing the modern coffee break. Today, the perfect human receives hundreds of emails a day. Don't you? <laughs> Social life. It's 9 a.m. Do you know where you are supposed to be? Managing a packed schedule is a true sign of perfection. <laughs> Look. Look. It's what's on the outside that counts. But more important than looking good is sharing those good looks with others. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, success. Success. Cash is a thing of the past. <laughs> We've all seen rappers make it rain in the club. But have you seen the investment banker flash his bank statement on his iPhone 5? <laughs> <laughs> Because the modern perfect human does not have time to read, visual or graphical information is the only way to communicate efficiently with the perfect human. So, the perfect human application offers the user a, a, a variety of ways to view their statistics. First, perfect human receives a numer numerical score. This score is the sum of all the other scores from the six perfect functioning categories. Now, this user isn't synced with the social life or success because they probably don't have an iPhone 5. Um, but how does the score, what does the score mean? So first it's stored in the application's calendar interface, which should look familiar except for the easy share function, which allows you to share your perfection scores very easily with your friends and family. Anyway, what we can see here is the patterns and habits that are developing. Most importantly, this user is particularly perfect on a Saturday, not during the rest of the week. All right, this score is also used to compare to the average user's score. Now, this data is actually from Jeron one day, but she's, she's really perfect, right? Well, not quite. When we break her down into the six different categories and look at it on a bar chart, here we can see that she's average, if not below average, in five categories other than communication skills. You could probably attribute this to the fact that she speaks three languages. Anyway, further, the application allows the user to compare the scores within each of these six perfect functioning categories as a percentage of his or her daily total. And we can even see how this particular sample compares to the average. Jerome is very perfect, 2.37 times more perfect. The interface would allow the user to break down each of the functioning categories and compare it visually in the pie chart, compare the numbers, and compare the percentages. The interface would easily show you which applications that you are using. Communicate. So this is Jaron, right? Like, she that's her percentage is twice as much. She's using and she's spending three quarters. We can easily see three quarters of her time that she spends functioning. She spends communicating. This is the interface for the communication skills. So now all of those text applications that you that you use. You know, you can you can see them all. There's no there's no gossip, miscommunications anymore. You can see everyone who you're communicating communicating with, you know, at at whatever time you need. All the same place. Sorry. Written skills. You don't need to see an interface for that. Look. So this is something interesting that happens here. Jerome's score happens to be a little bit higher than the average perfect human, but um, in terms of points, but her percentage of functioning is less. Maybe this is a good thing for her. Anyway, um, important though to note is that in unlike Facebook or Instagram, you really can't upload pictures of, of you know like your mom or your I don't know favorite 
restaurant. You can only upload pictures of yourself through this application. And you get more points. So Jaron's a straight female. So she gets more points for uploading pictures with a Z because he's a man. And she gets would get even extra points if she had something cute and cuddly in that picture, which she does. Um, so finally, the Perfect Human app likes to connect its potential, um, makes to make con potential love connection. So meet Jaron. Last September, she scored um, 439. That was her average monthly score, scoring four points above the average perfect human. Meet Jeff. Jeff, on the other hand, <laughs> had, an, had an average score of about 50 points below perfection in September. However, the perfect human application still suggests them as potential lovers. Why? Because they both scored a whopping 90% of their points in the looks function for that month, meaning both were posting an outrageous amount of pictures of themselves compared to other users. So on average, looks only accounted for about like 7% of their total scores. So they paired them together, and now they're in love. So analysis. So Perfect Human allowed me to turn Jaron into um, a dynamic set of data. Someone who was reward, rewarded for quantity and not quality of her daily interactions. She was rewarded for building a life online and not in the real world. Today, um, I've shown you many things, but uh, I, I'd like to just say that I'm really excited about discovering Wade Guyton, who has given me new meanings to that, and um, allowed me to sort of think that there might be ways of bringing my, what I'm doing with painting onto the computer and talking about that world. Um, I also want to say that the Perfect Human application allowed me to present a project that commented on the way we go through our daily lives, but we don't really build relationships on, on quantity. Um, do our relationships, emotions, communications need always to be realized face to face? Of course not. We've had plenty of beautiful and meaningful moments over the phone, and I can still remember texting late at night my first boyfriend under the covers holding my Nokia and waiting for the screen to light up. <laughs>